What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you all know, this is a Speak Your Success Media production. And today we have a phenomenal guest. And I'm not even going to waste any time. I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. So today we're joined by Ashley Smith. She's a dynamic professional in the world of sports management and player development. Her journey in sports began at the University of Tennessee, where she worked as a student manager for Lady Vols basketball program under the legendary leadership of Pat Summit. Ashley's career has taken her from the NCAA, where she has helped plan and execute 19 national championships. That's right, people, 19 national championships. That's not a typo, okay? To various roles at the University of Tennessee's athletic department, including assistant athletic director for player development and relations, as well as a recipient of the University of Tennessee Knoxville's 40 Under 40 Award. Ashley brings a wealth of experience and passion for helping athletes reach their full potential both on and off the field. Ashley currently serves as a manager of player engagement at the NFL League office, where she focuses on providing programs and resources for former and current players and their personal and professional development. Without further ado, Ashley, welcome to the show. How you feeling? Thanks, Jonathan. Super excited to be here with you today. So thank you for having me. Most definitely. Gl glad, to, glad to have you on. Just like we were talking about before, you know, we've been connected um, for some time now. And I know this has been well overdue. And I I've been following your journey and, and following just your career. And, you know, every time I see you on my timeline, I'm like, dang, Ashley doing something else? That's dope. So, you know, I got to double tap and always drop a comment. So gl glad, glad to get you, get you here for this opportunity. I am too. You know, I think the world of you and, you know, love all the things that you're doing with the podcast and, you know, just appreciate all your support. So glad that we could finally team up. Most definitely. Most definitely. Ashley, so let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and get into it. So j just just talking about your your career path and, you know, with with, with it being pretty diverse within, within sports, right? We talked about the NCAA and now with the NFL and, you know, all, all those other things that, that you've done. Amazing, uh, amazing work. How do you feel your experience across collegiate athletics, like with the NCAA and now with the NFL, have shaped your perspective on player development and engagement? Yeah, I think that definitely my time in the collegiate space prepared me for where I am now in the NFL. And I would definitely say when it comes to player engagement, it's been really cool to see the evolution of athletes, right? So when you when I was working in um, intercollegiate athletics, guy, there was no NIL, guys weren't you know, getting paid to play or anything like that. And so now you see that that is the case. And so that guys are recognizing, hey, I have a voice. I have value that I bring to these universities. And then you take that next step to the NFL. And I think guys are now recognizing that maybe in the past it was a matter of, okay, I'm just going to focus on winning games, being the best player that I can be. Guys realized, mm -hmm. yes, my job is, in fact, to play on a team and help win games. But at the same time, I am a full packaged man who has gifts and talents and career interests that go beyond playing in the National Football League. So it's been really exciting for me to have an opportunity to create programs and initiatives that will expose guys to career opportunities, to industry experts, so that they can create, you know, just relationships that ultimately will help them with their lives beyond football. Certainly, certainly. And I mean, I love just hear, hearing you say that, hear, helping them become like a full packaged man, right? Not not just the athlete or not just this person who, you know, does one thing, but, you know, they're, they're multi, multi hyphenated, right? Because you have guys right. that are fathers, guys that are sons. And then now we have entrepreneurs, business owners. So I, I mean, I, I think that's really that's, that's really dope just for, you know, you to have that passion. But even even like look, looking at you with that passion and knowing that, like creating programming that is helping these individuals see the world bigger, right? See the world bolder. And for you having this level of perspective, I, I want you just to talk about, elab well, I, I want you just to elaborate for a second. Like, can you share a time where you had to set an ambitious goal to where this ultimately led through a significant breakthrough for your career? And like, what, what, did, those, what did some of those challenges look like? Yeah, I would probably say, um, a you know, a big part of my career that I think was instrumental was, you know, as you mentioned, at one point, I was the assistant AD for player relations and development at the University of Tennessee. So at the time, I was the youngest um, staffer at Tennessee that was a part of the senior staff of the athletics department. 
Mm -hmm. at the same time, I was one of two black women that was running player development for an SEC football program. And unfortunately, during that time, the program underwent an investigation. So our head coach was fired and then our AD was asked to resign. And so for me, we had our new regime come in, both from the football aspect, as well as with the athletic administration. And honestly, Jonathan, I had to really kind of evaluate, okay, where is my career going at this point? Does it make sense to stay at Tennessee? Mm -hmm. And so I left with no job. And I was very just, you know, strategic with who I shared that news with, just because sometimes when God is telling you to do something, it doesn't make sense to everyone else, right? But he told me to do it. He didn't tell everyone else to do that. And (laughs) so, you know, and so that led to me reaching out to different NFL teams, colleges, NBA teams, and, you know, a door opened for me to go and work a training camp with the Kansas City Chiefs as an intern. But I knew all along that I wanted to work in the NFL, you know, as a full-time employee. And so obviously that was a very humbling thing, but, you know, I just felt that the Lord was saying, take on the heart and the mindset of Ruth, like Boaz found Ruth when she was working in the field. And so I just trusted and believed that if God opened the door for me to work with the Chiefs in this capacity, and if I worked hard and honored him with this opportunity, that he would bless me. And so it ended up being one night, the GM, you know, kind of said, hey, what's the plan? Got to have a full-time job, things of that nature. And I told him that I was in the final three for my current role. And he was like, what? So then he had Coach Reed and all these people called. And two weeks left in the internship, I was landed in my current role, right? So I think kind of going back to your question of, I was ambitious saying, okay, I know that my season at Tennessee is up. I know that I want to work in the NFL. Yeah, I'm applying for jobs and whatnot, but I'm not really getting hits. So let me take a leap of faith and reach out to different NFL teams. And then when the door opened to go and work with one, even though it wasn't in a full-time capacity, I was humble enough and trusted God with that to say, okay, where God guides, he provides. So I believe that he would you know, open the door of opportunities for me to get to where I wanted to be, which was a full-time role at the National Football League, which I'm four seasons into having just that. Wow. Wow. Come on, Ashley. Come on. Talk about Boaz. Come on. Talk about Boaz Ruth. Hey, I, I want you to unpack that just just a little bit more, Ashley. And I, I want you to unpack th- this this part specifically, because you talked about being uh, one, one of the very uh, few black women that, that had the opportunity to sit at the table, right, for being a part of an SEC program. And for those out there who aren't, aren't aware, SEC by far is one of the best conferences, hands down, especially when we start talking about football. And then as we talk about how that transitioned you to the NFL and you said you took a you took an internship, like, can, can you just share like like what do you think yeah. some of your unique insights or some of your unique perspective that you brought to the table to where you knew that I deserve to be at this table and any team that has me, it would be a privilege. Of course, going in humble. Right. But still knowing that confidently in your mind. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think that, you know, and not to play the whole race thing, but from the time like second grade to now, I've often been in spaces where I'm the only black woman that's in the room. And so I think early on, I learned that I need to be my best. And it's not necessarily that I need to be better than all the white people in the room. At the end of the day, I don't feel like I'm competing with people based upon their race. I'm ultimately competing with myself to be the best that I can be, to be knowledgeable, to be confident, to be a resource to the current players and NFL legends that I'm working with. But I think, you know, that helped me recognizing that level of being competitive, being knowledgeable. And so then, you know, I get into a situation where, as I mentioned, I'm the youngest senior staff. So I really have to know my stuff backwards and forwards, right? Because I'm sure there are people that were much older than me and who didn't look like me thinking, what is this young girl doing having a seat at the table as far as the senior staff of, like you said, a premier SEC football program Mm -hmm. and athletic department. And so I think from there, what carried on and, and even my time at Tennessee working in football prepared me for working with football student athletes, 
coaches, executives, because I had that at the collegiate level. And then I think there's a level where, you know, to be honest, yeah, I was nervous. I had never worked in the NFL before, um, had never worked with, you know, professional athletes. So there is a level where for sure I was nervous, but at the same time, I just said, sometimes you have to go to grow. And I was Mm. just like, for me, I'd rather live my life in a way that if I try something and I fail, at least I tried versus my biggest fear in life is living a life of regret or kind of saying the shoulda, coulda, woulda, what if I had tried? What if I had taken that internship? What if I had had the conversation with the general manager? So I think that honestly, every experience that I've had in life and my career has prepared me for where I am. And I think you know, I would encourage people to despise not small beginnings. Um, never did I think that I'd be working in the NFL, but I'm also so grateful in the manner in which God ordered my career to where I could work in the collegiate level. So then when I got to this point, I was a little more prepared and kind of used to maybe how coaches or um, staffs interact and things of that nature because of my time at Tennessee. For sure, for sure. Man, I love that, Ashley. And then even... Talk a little bit more about, about your about your faith, right? Because you 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 just said earlier that that you know you encourage people, or, or you 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 had to encourage yourself, right, to say you know you got to go to grow, and then even the aspect of knowing that failure could happen, but still at the same time, for you, you know, you felt that 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 the failure would be ultimately, well, well, regret could be bigger than than the failure. So can can you just talk just a little bit about how like your faith really? Uh, play, plays a role with, within that? Yeah, for sure. So grew up in a two-parent household with my mother and father, and uh, nine years ago, lost my, mon- my mother unexpectedly. And so honestly, Jonathan, that took me through a ringer, dealt with depression, suicide, even questioning, you know, did I believe in God? All these things kind of feeling like, why in the world was my family experiencing that? And so over time, as I began to heal and obviously, um, you know, did a lot of things, got a counselor, went to outpatient behavioral health treatment, you know, all these things to work on my mental health. And at the same time, I was reminded of my mother and my mother was a woman of faith. She was a woman who wasn't afraid to take risks. She was a woman who, you know, was an incredible mother, an incredible wife um, and a businesswoman as well. And she was my dream incubator where at times I would get in the bed with my mom and say, I want to accomplish X, Y, Z. And she would say, as long as you have faith in God, as long as you work hard and be confident in yourself and go after what you want, that will happen. And so I'm incredibly fortunate that my mother laid a solid foundation of faith for me to where once that, once she passed and I feel like she passed the baton for me to run my race right and it's almost kind of like she was in the nest with me and then when she fulfilled her purpose and went on to a higher place you know to be with the lord then that was an opportunity for ashley to now run her race and you know i'm someone who at some point i desire to be married desire to have children and so what i feel what i'm doing now like even coming to new york and being terrified when i moved here and kind of questioning could i live in a place like this Um, I remember having a conversation with my father and he said, why are you not excited? You're getting ready to move to New York and you are getting ready to work at the NFL. And I said, I'm terrified about this. And he was like, well, why did you even make the decision to go? I said, because the decision is much bigger than me. At some point, I want to be a wife and a mother and I want to be able to encourage my children out of, I'm telling you what I know because this is what I did versus do as I say, but not as I do. And so for me, when I think about taking that leap of faith, I think about the legacy, not only that my mother left for me, but I think about the legacy that I'm creating and building and one day will leave for my children, my children's children, and so on. Wow. Wow. Family out there watching, don't go nowhere. We're going to come right back. We're going to hear more about Ashley and as she continues to build this legacy in just one moment. Do you want to feel confident in your skin every day? Introducing Skin Rituals, a luxury home-based skin studio that specializes in hyperpigmentation, acne, and personalized treatments for every skin type. Owned by solo esthetician and registered nurse, Courtney Durham, Skin Rituals is all about curating facial treatments designed just for you. 
Hydrate, brighten, nourish, and soothe your skin with expert care and cutting edge techniques that promote natural healing. Whether you're looking for a relaxing facial or a transformative chemical peel, Skin Rituals offers results driven treatment tailored to your needs. With over seven years of experience, Courtney's goal is to help you safely achieve the healthy skin that you deserve. At Skin Rituals, we believe that taking care of your skin is an investment in your confidence. Book your appointment today and leave every session feeling grateful for the choice that you made to take care of yourself. Skin Rituals, because your skin deserves the very best. What's going on, family? Welcome back. If you have not hit that subscribe button, go ahead and hit it right now. All right. You want to subscribe to the Speak Your Success Media channel and you want to make sure that you get all the content as soon as we drop. OK, so hit that subscribe button. Bing. And become part of the family. So welcome back. Uh, this is Beyond the Ball. And uh, we've been talking with Ashley Smith and man, Ashley. So as you've been been sharing with us a, a little bit about, you know, your, your, your time and, and the work that you've done uh, within the SEC and then, you know, you, you move forward to the NFL and in this realm of uh, professional development, personal development, really, really setting up guys for, for life. Right. Not just uh, where they current are, currently are in the moment, but but for life. So just thinking about those athletes that you've worked with all across the, these levels, what would you say some of the most significant differences that you've seen uh, in terms of the personal and professional development needs uh, of these athletes at the different stages? Yeah, I would definitely say at the collegiate level, you're dealing with guys that a big piece is, you know, they still have mom and dad heavily involved with what, you know, they have going on. Also, there's a level of, hey, I'm trying to really push you academically into make sure that you're going to class. So I think there's a little more hand holding at the collegiate level, whereas in the NFL, it's kind of, you're no longer a boy, you're a grown man. And so I think that at this point it's, hey, you have a job to do and you're here playing football to compete and to keep from getting cut and ultimately to feed your families. But also I think there's this exciting component where, you know, in the collegiate space, these guys are like, hey, I want to, yes, I want to do well academically. I want to do well athletically so I can get to the NFL. Mm -hmm. The athletes working with today, they're here. So now it's like, not only let me do my job and do it well so that I can keep my job, but at the same time, I know that at some point this job will come to an end. So let me really tap into the different gifts and talents that I have, the different interests that I have around my career, my finances, things of that nature, so that when that door is closed and I'm no longer a current player within the NFL, I have options. I can transition properly and successfully and be able to show my children that yes, your dad played in the NFL for X, Y, Z amount of time, but also look at what your dad is doing off the field as well. Yeah, I love that. I mean, yeah, I especially that. them being able to have, you know, them being able to have that uh, track record, right? Or, you know, ha have, have those receipts to be able to say, yeah, this is what I did. And I was doing, I was not only just playing, but I was also uh, being strategic with a parallel plan. So I think that's super, super dope. Uh, but I want to I want to ask you this because I've had conversations with collegiate athletes and uh, after their time of competing and, you know, they're looking back and they're like, college didn't do this for me and they used me up and all these things. But for you. Right. And, 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 and with the seat you sit in now working with professional athletes as well as former athletes in the NFL, like how do you tailor like those, those particular trainings to, you know, the guys who are currently still competing as well as those guys who have transitioned on? Yeah. So what we do is that we often, you know, put out surveys to ask guys, what are your interests with programming? So the program that we did last off season, we'll ask them, did this resonate with you? Where would you, attend this program or workshop again if, they if you had the opportunity. And so we really try to get a lot of their feedback and make sure that our programming is catered towards those guys and what they want and their needs. And then I think the other piece is relationships. Um, a big piece is having conversations with guys to find out what are areas of interest to you? What are you looking to get from, whether it's participating in a program, X, Y, Z. And I, I would say this, um, to the college athlete that says, hey, you know, college didn't do anything for me, X, Y, Z. I think with anything, whether it is the collegiate space, the professional space, 
you get out what you put in. Um, you know, I, I've seen some situations where college athletes are developing relationships with their coaches. They're developing relationships with the support staff, the athletic department. And what those athletes got out of that experience is very different from the guys where maybe they just went to class or maybe you had staff constantly trying to pressure them or run after them to find them to go to school. Um, even with the NFL, right? There are guys and they're playing and they're making millions of dollars, but maybe with some of the developmental programs and resources that they're offering, they're not tapping in. Okay. But we have some guys and they are making the millions and they're still tapping in. So those are the guys that are then, you know, developing relationships with the commissioner. They are developing you know, relationships and exchanging hands and contact information and getting business opportunities with some of our corporate sponsors and things of that nature. So I say with anything, you get out what you put in. Um, and I would just encourage those athletes that maybe they didn't have the best experience collegiately um, to take a step back now that they're in the NFL and say, what, where could I have done better in my time at college to have a more fulfilling experience? What's done is done. Let me learn from that and let me apply the lessons learned to this pro space so that I can get everything that I need out of this experience. Yeah, I mean, I love that, especially just that having that forward thinking mindset and, you know, just, just having that like go getter type attitude. Like I missed these opportunities while I was competing collegiately, but let me get all I can and really maximize the opportunity now. So, yeah, thank, thank you for sharing your perspective uh, on, on, on that. And in, in, in terms of, or with, with you having the experience that you have in terms of player relations and development, what do you see as some of the most pressing issues that professional athletes are facing today? And, and what's the NFL doing to address these concerns? Hmm. I would say probably one of the most pressing um, issues that guys are facing would be a number of things. I think one, time management, you know, whenever guys are in college, your your time is pretty much filled from morning to night, right? So it's some guy, some colleges, you're having workouts in the morning, and then you have class, and then you're having some workouts at night, and then study hall and all those things. Whereas in the NFL, you're more so tasked with, you know, kind of setting the schedule for your life. Mm -hmm. um, I think something too would be social media, especially social media has taken off in such a way where I think social media can be a blessing and a curse because it's like, okay, great. You have this digital platform where you can build your brand, right? That's something that we're mm -hmm. often hearing, whether it's in the collegiate space, the pro space, but then what does that look like when you miss the the field goal that has caused your team to lose, whether it be the Super Bowl or regular season game, right? So dealing with that. And then I think just women. I, I think that um, especially when you look at the NFL, you're finding guys that, again, are making hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. And so you have women kind of coming out of the woodworks. Um, and so I, I think to all of that, Kind of what we're looking to do is that from a time management standpoint, we work really heavily with the heads of player engagement. So every NFL club has a head of player engagement who is kind of who is the point of contact for all things regarding the current players at the clubs. So we really try to position and equip them and have professional development for those heads of player engagement so that when guys are running into issues around time management or around their professional development or around family that they can properly equip them, counsel them, things of that nature. I think from the standpoint of social media, we have per the CBA, so the collectively bargained agreement, um, it's that there's social media training. So we wanna make sure that guys are equipped and knowledgeable on how to use social media properly to where it can be a help and not a hindrance to you. Um, we also have resources around mental health and total wellness. So if a guy gets into a situation and maybe he's receiving negative feedback or, you know, just fans being fans sometimes and just spewing negativity and hate, 
then okay, that guy has resources. And then I think from the standpoint around women, we also have training for the CBA as well around, you know, DVSA, so domestic violence, sexual assault, how to have healthy relationships, how to establish proper boundaries so that, you know, you're never in a situation where a woman is saying you did something that you didn't do. We always try to equip guys that like life will come at you and sometimes life will present situations and circumstances that you're not prepared for. But however that may happen and whatever that looks like, here are the tools and resources you can utilize to put yourself in the best position to be healthy, to be safe, and to have a fruitful career. Wow. 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 Actually, I, I mean, I knew the NFL was doing programs and different things like that, but I didn't know, you know, to the level that, that, that you just shared. So, man, shout out to, shout out to you and the NFL and, and the work that y'all are doing just to help, help guys really be set up for success around social media, mental health. And just like you uh, shared with the financial literacy and everything like that. that that's phenomenal, Ashley. That's phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm definitely proud of the work that we're doing. I think sometimes the NFL, there's this misconception that, you know, we just have guys out here running rogue and we don't have resources and development opportunities for them. And there's there are, are a lot of people within the National Football League that are working to position the players for success. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, earlier we talked about you, you stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit. Can you share a specific instance where you had to do this in your career? And then what lessons did you learn from that experience? Yeah, I would say a big one would be whenever the previous assistant athletic director for player relations and development, when he left and he took a job as an athletics director, I, instead of waiting for maybe the position to be posted, I reached out to the head coach and the athletic director and just said, hey, I see that this person is leaving. I'm not sure if you all have plans to backfill the position, but just wanted to let you know that I'm interested and willing to provide my services. And here are the reasons why I think that I would be um, a credible candidate. And also here are the ways in which I feel that I could contribute to the football program. So I learned, you know, the saying is true, closed mouths don't get fed. Mm. And, you know, I think there was a level of, oh goodness, am I being overly aggressive if I do this? But reality of the matter is that men do it every day. And oftentimes, especially in sports, whether you see a position posted, oftentimes, yeah, position is posted, but organizations, people already know who they're gonna hire. Mm. So. I just felt, let me be proactive rather than reactive. And I'm a firm believer that what God has for me is for me. So, you know, I made, I made my petition known, so to speak, and made my interest known. And then I just allowed God to add his super to my natural. And however the cards played out, which it played out with me getting the role, then that's clearly what God had for me. But that's definitely a significant, I think, a pivotal moment in my career where I learned that you have to just go after what you want. So, so what I'm hearing you say right now, Ashley, is one, you got to shoot your shot, but two, you got to be confident and get aggressive. And just, if, if you want it, you got to go ahead. I'm not saying name and claim it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, go, go ahead, shoot your shot and then just get real aggressive about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You can name it, claim it, but then you got to go get it. Um, <laughs> you know, like you got to put work behind it. Um, I think to your point, like, even the Bible says faith without works is dead. I think sometimes people are in this place where it's like, I have faith, I'm going to pray. But God's like, hey, you got to you got to do some work here, too. And so that's just, you know, an area in my career where I, was, where I realized, like, OK, I got to go after what I want. There it is. Y'all y'all heard it here first. OK, faith without works is dead, but we're not dead just yet. We're coming right back after this break for more of Ashley Smith. Looking for a fresh cut and a style that turns heads? Welcome to Reek Ellum Styling Suite, where barbering is an art. At Reek Ellum, we don't just cut hair, we create confidence. Specializing in precision cuts and the latest trends, we're all about helping you look and feel your best. From sharp fades to bold styles, every cut is crafted with care and detail. Reek Ellum Styling Suite is your go-to spot for top-tier barbering in an atmosphere that's laid back and all about you. Ready to elevate your style? Book your appointment at Reek Ellum Styling Suite today and leave feeling like the best version of yourself. 
What's going on, family? If you have not hit that subscribe button, make sure to go ahead and hit it, all right? Just go ahead and become a part of the family so you can get access to our interviews and our content that we're rolling out daily, okay? So go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you can be part of the fam, all right? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, we're here with Ashley Smith, and she's sharing her journey with us. She's sharing her story, and she's she giving a game, okay? She's she giving some high fire, okay? <laughs> she's she giving some high fire. And Ashley, I, I want to I wanna talk with you about this now. I want to get your perspective here. A as somebody who's successfully navigated this male-dominated industry, what advice would you give to young women, black women in particular, who aspire to build a career in professional sports management? I would say to be confident in yourself, right? If you don't believe in yourself, you can't get anyone else to believe in you. I would mm -hmm. say develop connections, relationships. Um, the world of sports is small and it's not always who you know, but who knows you and is willing to speak well of you. And then I would also say, just don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to take risks. Um, you know, I, when I look at my career and the different opportunities that I've had, I never once said, I wanna work at the NFL. I never once said I want to work at the NCAA. I never once said I want to work in football at Tennessee, but I was open and prepared for the opportunities as they came and wasn't afraid to take the risk to step outside of my comfort zone. So I would tell black women in particular those different things. And also I would say be open. Some of my mentors, some of the people who have played such instrumental roles in my career looked nothing like me. So just mm -hmm. because you see a black woman or you see a black man doesn't mean that they're going to be your mentor. doesn't mean that they're going to mm -hmm. be an advocate or a sponsor for you in your career. I would say try the fruit for what it is, right? So when you're meeting people, how do they treat you? Do they encourage you? Do they believe in you? And then you develop your circle of trust around that versus just saying, oh, I see a black man or a black woman in the room. Let me run to him or her and expect them to help me in my career. It doesn't always work like that. Mm. Man. Mm. Man. man. I, I once heard it said before, all skin folk ain't kin folk. Okay. I once heard it said before. So I, I, I get it. That'll I get it. <laughs> I get it. So Ashley, with your with, with with your brother Trey, right, playing in the NFL, yeah. while you also work in the league office, how do, how does this unique dynamic inform your understanding of players' needs, as well as how do you maintain professional boundaries while leveraging this personal connection? Yeah, I think that being that I have a brother who plays in the NFL, and and not only is he a player on an NFL team. My brother is a starter and also a two-time Super Bowl champion. So we've been through, you know, just kind of seeing the season all the way to its fruition, ending with the Super Bowl. I, I would say that I have an advantage because I have someone who's living through different things within the league. So I can always ask him, what's your thought on this? What's your perspective on this? in the locker room what are guys saying that they need from the nfl what are ways in which we can improve our offerings and our resources so i appreciate him for that and then i think that you know when it comes to the professional boundaries i think it's just operating with integrity you know obviously there's often information and things that are being pushed across my desk that i can't share with my brother and so we kind of keep it on a need to know basis if there are things going on at the office and he needs to know great, I'll share it. But the things that are confidential and are only for my eyes and ears only, we keep that line of, of you know, demarcation, I guess you could say, or separation to where um, we just make sure that it's a healthy relationship. And at the end of the day, the priority is he's my brother first. So we focus more on that. And then, you know, the added bonus is that we're both living in this world of, you know, NFL football. But yeah, that's kind of how we balance it. I love that. I love that. And I mean, especially, you know, with, with you being a proud supporter of your brother, I, you know, I can see and and I, and I always see down down the timeline. And just like you said, two time Super Bowl winning champion, seeing you on the field with them, the confetti's out there and just smiles all around. So, yeah, that's really awesome and, and really, really special. Definitely special. So we're going to. Yeah, gonna, it is. It's been a. 
Go ahead, Ashley. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. I was saying, I was just going to say, yeah, it's been a blessing. Um, it's been a dream come true. You know, my brother, as a young child, always wanted to play in the National Football League. And, you know, a promise that he made to our mother on her deathbed is that he would get his college degree, which he did. And then also he would play in the National Football League. But God and just his goodness and his grace said, hey, I'm going to add a couple of cherries on the top with two Super Bowl rings. And now he and his Chiefs teammates are competing, you know, for the third. Man, man, that's special. Yeah, that's that, that's that's definitely special. Definitely special. And now I want to I want to pivot j just just a little bit, and I, I want to focus a little bit now on on some of the some of the other ways that that you're making an impact, right? Because I, I I know you you've expressed uh, interest in, in public speaking and, and career coaching. So how do you see these aspirations lining up with with, with your role? And what unique perspectives do you hope to bring to, to audiences, you know, that, that are outside of the professional realm of sports? Yeah, so I often have, um, you know, young professionals and even more seasoned professionals reaching out. When I tell you my LinkedIn inbox stays full, I'm often getting, you know, DMs on LinkedIn or people reaching out through Instagram and just different, you know, email, different platforms just kind of asking me, you know, how did you get to where you are in your career? What advice do you have? And so, yes, earlier this year, I began public speaking and just traveling to organizations as well as different schools, um, whether it's in person, then also have done some things virtually as well. But just talking with people on here, are the steps that I took to get to where I am, here are the different opportunities, here are ways that you could try and get your career of whether it's working in sports or just a career in general, especially fresh out of college off the ground. And I think my hope is that, you know, I often tell people, you know, when they look at some of these professional athletes or they look at, you know, famous singers and whatnot, and there's no difference between me and those people. There's no difference between those of us who are at home admiring, whether it's celebrities that we enjoy or whatnot, the only difference that I see is that those people took their gifts and talents and they said, I'm going to go for it. And so what I tell people all the time, the same way that I had a chance to work with, you know, Coach Summit and work with the football program at Tennessee, the same way that I had a chance to plan not one, not two, not three, but 19 national championships at the NCAA, the same way that I'm now working at the NFL and having a chance to watch my brother win Super Bowls, but also having a chance to create and implement programming that can ultimately shape and change a player's life. If I can do that, the next person can too. You just have to be, you have to know what you want in this life, know what you want in your career, go for it, be open to opportunities as they come, be confident in yourself and just continue to grow and evolve and get better as the days go by. And so I hope that by me sharing insights into those times when I hit rock bottom after losing my mother and having to humble myself and say, hey, you know what? I need some help around my mental health sometimes, especially in the black or in ethnic um, communities. It can be seen as a sign of weakness. No, um, it's a sign of just, you know, resources and, and I think just help that, you know, we're blessed to have. Yeah. If I can overcome yeah. those things and get to where I am, other people can too. And I think that's really powerful. Just, just, yeah, just your, your your level of awareness for for one, uh, but even as you just shared and unpacked your experiences with us and and some of your story with us today, like I am super proud of you, Ashley, for you you know just taking the taking the torch and be being willing to stand up and and share your message and share your story and and see how you can pour into and impact others all around. So so thank you for for not not hiding your light and you know just putting it out there. So that people can be encouraged, inspired, and and truly enlightened. I appreciate that. I, I'm a firm believer that you know God gives us lights not to have under a lampshade, right? But to illuminate that and and be able to spread hope, encouragement, um, you know, just support and whatnot to other people. Like we're blessed to be a blessing. And when I look at personally the things that God has blessed me with, in spite of 
the hardships, the trials and the tribulations. Um, I think it's only right. I think that, you know, the word says too, that to whom much is given, much is required. So I feel that I have a responsibility. And when I look at my career too, yeah, I've worked hard. I've been incredibly confident and I've overcome challenges, but I also had people who have gone before me that blazed a trail, that believed in me, that, you know, opened doors of opportunity for me, connect me to different people. So how dare I not do the same for the next generation? Um, and so that's kind of what I, I think just having to lift others as I rise. Let's go. Let's go. Keep lifting as you rise. Keep lifting as you rise. And now, actually, what, what I want to do, I want to I want to do a, a, a slight transition. And th this is this is the fun part of this show. Right. This, this is a part we like, like to have a little bit of fun. And this is a segment I like to call this or that. Right. Where you just pick one option yeah. or the other. You didn't you have to prepare for this. There ain't nothing to be worried about. But Ashley, are you ready? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Tailgating or brunch? Tailgating. NFL draft day suit or Met Gala outfit? Met Gala. Kardashians drama or NFL offseason drama? Ooh. Kardashians always keep it entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and the so, less offseason drama, we have the better my life is so definitely the kardashians trauma sounds good to me red uh red carpet event or sideline at a football game Ooh, sideline at a football game cold football game or a hot football game give it to me hot <laughs> rookie mentorship or veteran leadership veteran leadership team building retreat or training camp Team building. Financial literacy program or mental health initiative? Financial literacy. One-on-one -on -one mentoring or a group session? Group session. Last one, career transition planning or media training? Media training. There it is. There it is. And then Ashley, please let people know where they can find you, follow you and connect with you at this time. Yeah. So people can find me on social. So on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, as well as LinkedIn. So with my Instagram and my X account, it's at I am E. Elizabeth is my real name. So at I am E Ashley Smith. Um, and then on LinkedIn, it's Ashley Smith. If you see NFL in the background, it's me. And yeah, those are the main ways. And then over time, if we develop a relationship, then it's my email and whatnot. But my socials, that's definitely a great place to find me. Fair enough. And Ashley, before we let you get out of here, uh, we have the Dear Student Athletes segment. And this is the segment to where, you know, the, the guests, you, even though you've added tremendous value all throughout the show thus far, but this is the opportunity to where, uh, you just give a tip or you just share something with, with, with the student athlete. So, you know, so just think about a current collegiate student athlete. They're currently navigating through through college and NIL at this point. But what, what would be one tip that, that you would like to leave with the student athlete? Dear student athlete, what you do does not define you. There's so much more to who you are and the gifts and talents that God has put inside of you. So I encourage you, allow your sport to be a platform that you utilize in order to fulfill your purpose, but don't allow what you do to be your identity. There's so much more to you. There it is. There it is. Ashley, thank you so much for taking the time to, to spend with us, to rock out on Beyond the Ball. Uh, it, it was def definitely a privilege and, and definitely an honor. So thank you for, for, for your time today. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you for having me. Most definitely. And family out there, if you have not uh, subscribed to our channel, be sure to subscribe. All you have to do is type in Speak Your Success Media uh, and we'll pull right up on YouTube. But family, until next time, this has been Beyond the Ball, where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree.